I'm going to be playing with an experimental manure substrate. Coir, brown rice flour, horse manure tea, and vermiculite. Manure is nice and old. It's been sitting in my garage for a couple years. You can see it's very dry. Crumbs comes apart pretty easily. All right, I got this eight cup Pyrex cup filled up. Water. And 16, 16 cups of water. Now I'm going to stir this all in here and let it steep for an hour, then strain. Now while that's steeping, I'm going to break up some of this canna in my old Oster food processor to make sure that I get uh, down to the right consistency to, to measure out. There, she's all busted up good. Uh, for this application, oh, there's a piece right there. But anyways, for this application, loose choir might be uh, helpful. And there we go, it's all busted up. You can see the consistency is uh, quite manageable. It's gonna be great for hydrating and getting all that tea mixed in there and ensuring that this is going to blend well with the brown rice flour and vermiculite. And there we go, manure tea. So this recipe is gonna be two parts coir. Uh, in this case, two parts will be two cups. One part vermiculite or one cup. Now I'm gonna mix this all together and uh, hydrate it with the manure tea. I wanna do that before adding the brown rice flour or else it will turn to kind of like a muddy paste. So this will help to coat everything and get it all hydrated nicely and mixed in thoroughly. Now the 1.5 parts manure tea. Now I'm gonna play around with this. I'm gonna mix it in, see if it's sufficient. If it's too much, I'll add a little bit more verm. It's, if it's uh, not enough, well, you know, I'll adjust accordingly. It was a little too dry, so I added a half more cup and it is now perfect. You can see there I'm squeezing hard and got some decent drips coming out of there. That is good field capacity. Now the one cup or one part brown rice flour. All right, so it's all mixed in, it's looking good, it's fluffy, it's got good field capacity. Now when I added the brown rice flour, it dried it up a little bit, it um, threw off the field capacity. So I added another half cup of tea. So now I'm sitting at 2.5 cups of tea to get this to field capacity. So I'm gonna load this in the jars and then uh, run them. As always, for ease of loading, use a canning funnel and I'm using these 750 milliliter wide mouth shoulderless Bernardin canning jars. These are filled and then tamped down slightly to about one and a half inches in depth. I'm not pressing firmly on here, I'm just making things even, not so fluffy. They're looking pretty good in there. I am using gray leak proof ball lids. They have 29 millimeter synthetic filter disc, three micron pore size with a quarter inch hole in the lid. So when running at atmospheric or pasteurizing or anything similar, you wanna ensure that you have enough water that is not going to boil dry and that your trivet stands high enough out of the water that your jars are not actually in the water. I'm running four jars in here. Two will be run for 90 minutes. They will then be taken out and the other two will be allowed to stay in here until 120 minutes is up. All four will then sit on a shelf at room temp. I'm going to label uh, which ones were the short cycle and which ones were the long cycle. And uh, I'm going to leave them sealed up, see how long it takes for them to contaminate, if they contaminate. If the lower time exposure was sufficient uh, and they don't contaminate, well, then I know that I can use the shorter cycle rather than the longer cycle to process these. This one will serve as a control. It's going to go in at 15 PSI for one hour. One hour cycle is up. I'm going to let that come down to zero and then pull it out and label it. All right, so the 90 minutes is up. I'm going to turn the heat down, take out the two jars, label them, and then continue for another 30 minutes with the other two.
Got the water top back up and these two are going to go in for an additional 30 minutes. All the jars have been cycled, labeled, and they are now going to sit on a shelf and I'm going to observe them a couple times a day, see what happens. Stay tuned for part two.